What's going on everybody? Federer here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I have a pretty interesting machine on my table for testing. Now, I haven't had this thing for very long, so please keep that in mind, but I'm just gonna focus on the time that I had it and, and, and the things that I've tested with it. So there's gonna be other channels out there that have had this thing and have the time to actually evaluate it and do a bunch of projects on. There's gonna be channels popping up right over here. Please check those out after this video if you do like this machine. But this is called the Alchemand by Ailey Archie. It is is a Kickstarter machine uh, and I'll tell you why I decided to actually accept this machine in the first place because I usually don't do Kickstarter type machines because you can't buy one right now you can support the company and have them make it eventually and then eventually get your hands on it but the reason why I wanted to do this was because when I saw the tech specs for the L command I was kind of blown away on paper there's nothing else like it and as you guys know there's a bunch of companies right now kind of pushing the envelope in 3d printing and what's you know what's a possible for consumer uh, grade machines but this one does it a little bit differently this machine just focuses on printing super hot how hot well let me show you some filament that they sent me they sent me this it's drying right now on my polymaker dryer but some of you guys might recognize this, this is the extremely expensive roll of peak that's right so why would they send me peak well because this machine can handle printing peak in your home on a non-industrial grade machine that to me is wild and that's why i wanted to say yes send me the machine no money was exchanged hands i literally just can do whatever i want with the machine as long as i showcase it to you guys in some way and that's what i really wanted to do so let me read the label here it's going to be upside down because the way the roll is positioned but the the minimum temperature needed to print peak is 380 degrees and that goes to 440 and then the bed uh, temperature needs to be 130 or 150 to 150. And then the chamber has to be between 90 and 130 C. So by those numbers, can your Ender 3 print that? No, I don't think so. So that's where this machine comes into play. It also has a bunch of other really cool things like a filtration system like I have never seen before. Uh, it has a large filter surrounded by fans, both exhaust and intake on the bottom on the inside of the machine. And uh, the filtration just filters the air on the bottom. It doesn't actually filter it out of the machine. So the air that's trapped inside of the machine stays clean, which is something new. Uh, so outside of going really hot as well, there's also an interesting thing like for example You see the screen right over here it isn't an articulating screen. It spins You can also just completely tuck it away if uh, if it's in the way or you need it to have multiple of these machines Because it's running clipper you can just go headless on the machine So you don't need the screen at all. It has some other interesting things like a heater that gets really hot and so on and so forth Like I said, I'm not gonna bore you with the tech specs because I haven't had enough time to really dive deep on the machine machine but what did I get done here's what I got done I printed a whole bunch of drone parts because one of the other reasons why I said yes to this machine is well you guys know I'm really into FPV uh, I've been flying for some time now I'm a licensed pilot I have many many drones I've built so many drones anything from five inch freestyle quads to to whoops anything and everything that flies i kind of want to get my hands on it and try it it's just something i love so when they message me that they want me to 3d print an fpv drone my instant reaction is well if i know anything about building fpv drones is yeah you can print frames for them because pla for example is rigid enough uh however they're extremely fragile if you do anything with pla it kind of shatters right and with fpv doing a little bit of freestyle if, especially if you fly aggressively you're going to crash which means you're going to be constantly re repairing these things uh way more uh than something like carbon fiber for example which is kind of the gold standard for fpv quads but then I got to thinking, well, ABS carbon fiber is something that requires special printers. Not every, not every machine can print that, and that is a really rigid uh, filament. Then we also have nylon carbon fiber, which is also somewhat rigid, but has a flex to it because nylon is flexible. Think zip ties, for example. So then uh, I saw their, uh, their actual quad kit, and this does have some changes, but uh, this is essentially what I came up with. I printed the whoop part 
in uh, some nylon and that has some flex to it. Not as much as TPU would, for example, but it's rigid yet impact resistant because it has a little bit of flex, which is perfect. Then to have the motors mounted, you want as much rigidity in FPV uh, uh, drone as possible so that there's no weird oscillations and uh, the uh, flight control doesn't go crazy. So this we printed in some glass fiber um, uh, ABS and this is way more rigid. Here's an example of it printed in nylon and as you can see those motors would be flopping all over the place. So we got some really rigid ABS glass fiber mounted to some um, some nylon glass fiber or carbon fiber rather and we get this kit. So this helps me answer can you now 3D print your own FPV quad frames. And the reason why that's important uh, is because, well, for example, when I ever build uh, an FPV quad, I end up having to buy extra arms or frames or parts because when you wreck, especially real hard and you break that carbon fiber frame, well, you have the mercy of the manufacturer. They might even discontinue it and you might not even have those anymore. But in this case, you could just print your own replacement parts. And if you are fl flying aggressively or even just learning, it becomes a lot less of a big deal and something like this can really get you there, right? So as soon as I heard that, I, I had to try it. So uh, here is a short reel of me assembling this thing. Uh, there are some changes since then, like a different camera that I put on there and a different receiver because I wanted to use my own uh, transmitter. But check this out and check out the flight that I was able to capture. Uh, this isn't the very first flight, it's about the second or third battery pack that I had through it at. Uh, and my in-laws house there but check it out and i'll see you here in just one second
So, not bad, right? I think to answer my own question of can you 3D print an actual uh, FPV quad that performs decently? I think the answer now is yes. I did end up ordering an FPV system, a, a digital uh, camera system for this FPV quad because I do really love the way that this flies. So we're gonna swap from analog to digital with the new 04 light uh, system and see how it flies. Then uh, I'm really looking forward to tuning this thing. And like I said, I've done a little bit of modification to this thing here and there. I have a few more ideas. So I will be posting these files that are kind of edited at some point if you guys are interested in jumping in on a kit like this i think their kit with their really entry-level goggles their really entry-level radio is totally great for somebody learning uh, how to fly in the hobby as long as you're not afraid to get your hands dirty and you can always upgrade and iterate on this which is really really cool and the fact that you don't have to rely on a manufacturer for the parts well i think the alchemand really enables you to do those kind of things so now that you guys know generally speaking what this is about and what my experience has been like in the past Past few days is there anything that you guys want to know about a machine like this something that you can print really really hot materials with in your own home uh, like I said I now have a spool of peak I would love to put it to the test is there something specific before I go off and start printing cubes and benchies I'd love to hear from you guys and if you have any questions let me know down below as well all right guys that's been my short experience like I said I'm gonna continue to evaluate this based on what you guys are saying and what the things that I find uh, uh, going forward with this thing um, definitely uh, wishing uh, uh, Aliarchy uh, and Alchemand uh, the best of luck with their Kickstarter this is the type of thing that I want to see companies continuing to push 3d printing uh, for us to get closer and closer to just being able to make whatever we want that's what this hobby is all about and I think stuff like this uh, helps enable that type of thing I, I, and I tend to root for the underdog here and there you know all right guys as always check out 3dprintsos.com you can support the channel there buy yourself some cool merch uh, there's also a discord channel uh, feel free to jump in there ask a bunch of questions show off prints talk about the the aliarchy uh, alchemy and there as well and as always i'll see you guys in the comments later <laughs>